you guys are sick, I'm here in these days. You just say, let's cross Limpopo River. There's an MEC there who's running charity department. It's not. Yeah. And I'm going to tell you something that is truthful and painful. You know that SA goes and count people during the census and tell me that in Limpopo you have got 5.7 million people and tell me out of that 5.7 million, 91% do not have medical aid, they are dependent on the state. 9% uh, they will say has got medical aid, they depend on private hospital. And then they go and give national treasure. When national treasury allocates its budget, they said Limpopo has got 5.7 uh, uh, million people, and they subtract the 91, the 7 percent, 9 percent, and they give me the budget of the 91 to do all these operations. Now I am here instead of using the budget for what it's meant for. I'm operating for what Munangwabwa is supposed to do. Mm -hmm. And that is why when my people of Limpopo want health services, they can't get. Mm -hmm. And that is angering the community. Shortened version of a much longer conversation that went on between the MEC for Health in Limpopo, Dr. Popi Ramatuba, and a patient there from Zimbabwe. Well, the MEC is joining us now to respond to the avalanche of reaction that is still pouring in following that video that has gone viral. MEC, welcome and thank you very much for your time and for joining us tonight here on In Focus. First and foremost, I mean, we, 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 we won't be able maybe to get the full context of that conversation uh, in the time that we have, but... Give, give us a sense, a highlight kind of package of what was going on there. Were you speaking there as a medical practitioner or were you speaking there as, as, as a, a political head of the department uh, in the province? Evening, uh, Tabo, and evening to all the viewers, and thank you for inviting us. Chabo, maybe where I need to start is to indicate that as a political head of this province, I've been given the responsibility to make sure that the people of Limpopo live a long and a healthy life. And by that, it means I must provide them quality health care services. Now, one of the issues that we need to appreciate is that Section 27 does not allow us to deny anyone emergency medical health care services. Yeah. But however, we cannot be a providing um, health care services, not, not emergency, health care services to everyone without them paying. So as a province, having noted the limited resources that we have and this huge surgical backlog that is there in the province, 2020, we came up with this initiative of rural health care matters. Through this initiative, we go all out the country, request skills in the form of different specialists, your professors in different institutions, especially targeting those who originate from the province, to come and give back. And I must say thank you to all of them because they come at no cost to us. What we do is that we will move from one district to another in the rural hospitals where they will be provided theaters and medical officers to work with. In the process, they will be transferring skills. Now, since this project started, we've already operated more than 4,700. Now, coming to this challenge is because we've seen after doing all the work, the clinicians in the province are still complaining about the huge surgical backlog. So seemingly we are really not moving. That is when, when we do some analysis, we are realizing that we are actually spending more resources doing elective operations to mostly illegal immigrants in the country. And this, I remember in the month of June when we were in Chiritin, in a ward of 27 orthopedic cases that were operated, we realized that 19 were foreign nationals. We were at Kukune in the month, in the month of July 
where we operated uh, 270 cases, and also even in that area. I even met a guy who was saying to me, we got an accident while I was in Harare, and my brother who is here in the country also illegally called me to say there is services. There's a doctor who can be able to help you. She usually brings specialists. Now, this is an abuse of a program that we have initiated as a province appreciating our challenges yeah. to provide quality health care services to the poor people. Yeah. Now, on the day, usually what we come into your hands, we, I usually go and provide support to the clinicians. Now, we started at George Masebe, we met an, an other uh, illegal immigrants. We moved to, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure why the, 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 that side they didn't take the videos. We moved to Villa Villa Hospital, where clinicians were raising these problems with me. As a political head of the department, Tabo, it's my responsibility to do what my doctors cannot do. Yeah. They are overwhelmed. They cannot cope. We were having a conversation with the patient and explaining to them how budget works and how we are saying they need to pay. Yeah. Because that's what the constitution of this country is saying. All right. Now, you, you, you seem to be, for example, pointing to the uh, political head, number one of, of Zimbabwe in that conversation. And, and the question is whether or not you are raising that conversation at the appropriate level. One, you deal with that. But number two, as a doctor yourself uh, and as a politician and a lawmaker, you know what the laws say around the dignity and the respect that should be awarded uh, to patients. So at one level, there is a feeling that how you handle that uh, was not in a dignified manner that should have been awarded to a patient who is sick in a hospital from a doctor's point of view. But from a political head point of view, if you were raising such issues around whether the government of Zimbabwe should be paying or not, that is certainly not the level where you should have been raising that. You know, I, I understand uh, a lot of you uh, raising uh, those issues, but I also at the same time to say, put yourself in our shoes as provinces that are overwhelmed, having to deal with all these illegal immigrants. Firstly, we should appreciate that when we were talking to these patients, and, and unfortunately, most of the people say, I've got these harsh words. But the reality is, I even said to Mama, let's have a conversation, let's talk. And that part, it's not being reflected. Let me explain how things work. And we were doing that, and, and, and I remember saying, unfortunately, your government is Zimbabwe or any other, with the other patient, I was telling them that your government are not coming to the party because the constitution says we can't deny you emergency medical services. But elective operations, it is not our responsibility to do that. However, as a province, we are operating you, but we are saying, let's pay. Because if you look at how we, we, we classify, Tabo, when you visit a hospital, we will check if you are not working, you are a pregnant woman, you are a pensioner, we classify you as HDA. If you are earning below 35,000, we classify you as H1. If you are earning between 35 and 72, we classify you as H2, and above that, and those with medical age, H3. Now, that is done for both uh, South Africans and non-South Africans who are legal, who are either asylum seekers or have passports and all that. But the challenge we are having is those who are illegal, whom we cannot account for, and that they are supposed to pay full. But because we don't have any documentations from them, we, we are forced to assist them and they live without even copying. Now, the clinicians who are doctors, who are treating these patients, will not refuse them treatment. But the same clinicians are saying, your vision MC, of clearing surgical backlogs in this province yeah. will never be achieved because of this influx, you know, when they hear that we are doing operations, yeah. they cross the border illegally. Yeah. So that is what we were trying to explain to them, to say yeah. the impact of what you are doing. 
it is making South Africans not to get services right. they constitutionally deserve. Now, as you know, there are various classification of what a non-national is, including an un undocumented uh, migrant, and you've already articulated what Section 27 says. Even un non-documented migrants have a right to access to, to, to basic health care, as you put it, but uh, they, 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 they also, it says in Section 27 that they may be liable to pay. So my question is, why have they never been made liable to pay? For, for, for these services. Why, why this raise is what, it now? This is what we've been trying to raise even with the hospital management. Because I even had a meeting with them to try and understand why would we continue the status quo. You see, when anyone who is in the country needs emergency services, we will not deny the person. But in this case, we are saying to do those elective procedures, some of them are coming just to be done hysterectomies. It is costing us a lot of money. Orthopedics cases that were done there, they could cost between seventy and 200000 each. Now, when you operate five of those, it's already a million. The budget that I was saying we don't even have as a province, we have a $3 billion budget cut. We are raising this issue now, uh, Tabo, because there's been a lot of engagement Former Minister Dr. Mpreli has engaged his SADC uh, counterparts. I was still, uh, even at that time, working uh, as one of his MECs. And we've been raising this. We even went to Musina together to see the challenges that we're facing. These issues have been raised, and we're not getting the support to that side. Yeah. And I'm glad to say this debate has made national to say we need to continue because we, we, we reach a level we're in. We are going to fight with our own uh, South Africans who deserve quality health care because whenever they come to the hospital, they are told you, you must wait. We still have a long queue. And when you look at all those people who are before them, you realize they are illegal immigrants. Yeah. Why they can't pay is because we can't even trace them. We can't even make them pay. They come get services. Those who are in maternity, they come give birth. Immediately when the doctor says you are discharged, they disappear and we can't trace them. We can't even get the, the money that we are supposed to do. Right. So we are saying if the, their countries are not able to pay us, we should probably get the constitution kick. Will it be nice if we, they, when they arrive, we say you put money like private sector will do. If you don't put money up front, we won't give you because it's an yeah. elective Procedure. That's, that's, what I, that's what I wanted, to ask, I, I wanted to ask you. I wanted to ask you, can health care be limited depending on availability of resources? You mentioned a story of going to Canada, for example, being asked before you even get there. Can, can, can that system be applied in South Africa and how effective would that be? You know, in terms of the Constitution, it's supposed to be like that because we are saying we won't deny you emergency, life-threatening situation. But we are not saying we will give you uh, unlimited uh, health care. But things have been done wrongly for several years in this country. And probably this is why we're saying it is time that we need to correct what has been done because it's having serious pressure, not just on the budget itself, but even healthcare workers themselves, if you get the, I'm talking about those doctors who are really working in the state and those who are really dealing with patients. Yeah. I'm not talking about those who are working in their comfort rooms, in their private uh, sector who see patients that they would want to see. Those who are working in public hospitals, both even you go to Gauteng, you go to Mpumalang, Limpop, everywhere. Even my colleagues are also complaining about the situation. They've got a lot of burnout. But what is more painful is that for them as doctors, they are not never going to say, Tawo, it's a, a, a Pakistan, we want to operate, we will operate Poppy, who is a South African. To them, they are going to operate any patients because the hypocritic oath might not allow them to discriminate patients. That's where we come in as politicians. Yeah, where we yeah. look at the constitution and uphold the constitution of the country to say, look, 
South Africans also must be prioritized because this is their only option. Plus, you must appreciate the fact that when that 16-year-old boy whom we have admitted in Mankwen cannot write an exam because he still needs to be operated and he's number 19 on the list and all those who are coming before him are not even legal in the country. The question is, this young man who is the son of a domestic worker will not afford private health care. Therefore, he won't get health care in the private sector. Equally, his home is in this country, it's in this province, it's in this district. He cannot go any other place. Though the other patients, whether legal or not legal in the country, they still have got their a country uh, of birth where they can go and get an uh, alternative. Some of us who are making a lot of noise on Twitter, we have got medical aid. We have never been subjected to queue for a long time waiting to be done in right. operation. Right. The resources are limited time, and they need to be utilized effectively. Let me say, unfortunately, that's where we're going to have to leave it. I appreciate you coming on. But before you go, let me take a look at some of that noise that you're talking about that's happening on social media uh, tonight uh, on Twitter, Newsroom 405. Uh, this is Hopo Chinone, a well-known journalist in Zimbabwe. Uh, in any normal country, this video would be the leading item on all news stations and newspapers, and it would cause emergency debate in Parliament tomorrow morning, but not in Zimbabwe. This South African minister is right. Zimbabwe has become an embarrassment due to ZANU PF looting. Dr. Mike saying the last statistics shows that 80% of women giving birth at Musina Hospital are illegal Zimbabweans and South African women sometimes didn't find beds to give birth on. We're trying to fix our healthcare system, but we can never do it unless what our MEC is saying is addressed. When consciousness leaves, it doesn't say goodbye. A woman who is an MEC of health attacks a sick woman in a hospital bed using the most potent weapon words. Zimbabwean women are people and human too. MEC, thank you very much for your time and for joining us tonight here on In Focus. But maybe a quick one in 10 seconds if you can. Do you believe you violated the dignity of that patient? Uh, look, it, it will depend as to which angle are you coming from. Because we were discussing a patient with management doing the word round and we're sharing with the patient the reality. When are we as a country start to deal with this issue that even the National Health Insurance speaks to exactly what I was saying? Okay. Let me say it. I'm completely out of time. I wanted that quick one uh, uh, for, 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 for the patient in particular. We'll come back and talk to the NHI at a later stage. Much appreciated to the MEC there uh, for health in Bimbo, Dr. Popi Ramatuba.